right around eight or nine years old, I knew things would be different. I was raised in a single parent household. My mom did her best to raise my sister and me, working two jobs. And having that uh, challenge growing up, um, I recognized and realized that I was gonna have to step up. As a matter of fact, my mom reminded me that I was gonna have to step up and take on some responsibilities uh, that maybe an older sibling would and grow up a lot faster uh, than maybe she had wanted to and maybe that I even would want to. And I don't necessarily think that the word leader or leadership uh, comes into play in the mind of an eight or nine year old. Um, definitely wasn't a, a nominant uh, from that standpoint. However, I knew that there were things that I had to do different than most people my age. And my mom coached me up on that. And so I was prepared on, on what I had to do and, and what I needed to do. And so that kind of gave me a, a head start on understanding the leadership qualities and characteristics. And part of that was doing things different, doing what needed to be done when it needed to be done. Fourth grade, there was a one of my classmates picking on another one of my classmates. Now, the young man that was being picked on at the time, smaller kid, but he was a good friend of mine. We sat next to each other in one of my classes, and or most of my classes, because you really don't switch when you're in the fourth grade. Uh, but he was being picked on on the playground by another, another gentleman. Now, interestingly enough, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers were out at the time, and this particular guy who was the playing the role as the bully uh, happened to be trying to perform some martial arts on on this friend, and and you could obviously see he was uncomfortable, and and he didn't want to participate. Well, he ended up getting kicked uh, in the face, whether it be on mistake or on purpose. He got kicked in the face and started crying, and I just happened to be close enough to see it happen, and I remember rushing over and pushing uh, this guy who had uh, performed this karate kick on my friend. Um, in the midst of me pushing him, he was trying to kick me. I just happened to kind of catch him uh, in the middle of him, almost like a counter attack, um, and caught him in midair. And I remember him falling on the ground and then he started crying. Well, we both ended up you know, in detention or whatever it was in the fourth grade. And you're obviously not supposed to be fighting. Um, but I knew at that moment um, especially after I got out of detention and my friend ended up telling me thank you uh, for coming coming to my rescue and everyone else said somebody finally need to step up and say something to him but that was one of those those moments where um, I had my karate kid moment I didn't perform martial arts but I definitely got a shove in that, that let that that particular young man know that uh, he shouldn't pick on other people so that was that was one of the first times that I got outside myself and um, you know, stepped up for somebody else and, and showed some leadership characteristics on what shouldn't be done uh, to another person that you consider a friend. Uh, without hesitation, my mom is my life hero. Um, raising two kids on her own, working multiple jobs, sacrificing uh, meals at, at any given moment or any day to make sure that we ate growing up and just figuring out a way to keep going even when she could have quit on us multiple times. And you hear uh, tragic stories and terrible stories about parents uh, walking away from their kids or leaving their kids with their parents so that they can go and get their life together. And uh, sometimes those single parents end up on drugs or alcohol and uh, my mom stuck it out. And, and she's she's the reason why I do what I do and why I've always done everything that I've done. I've done in, that was always to make her proud um you know everything matters little things matter um the aglet on uh the shoestring the little plastic casing or sometimes they're metal now but that aglet is something so tiny but if that piece of plastic or that metal comes off of that shoestring or that hooded sweatshirt string it's so hard to get it in in and out of those small little holes and so without that small piece you can't you can't get what you want to get done accurately and efficiently. Uh, well, my mom, every single conversation, every hug, every word of encouragement, even now, every text message or every phone call, every moment spent with that woman uh, makes me a better person. And so those little things have added up 
um, and have put a small casing around everything that I do and it has allowed me to navigate through life uh, very efficiently and smoothly. And so I'm forever grateful and indebted to my mother and uh, she's definitely my biggest hero. I don't necessarily know if lifting weights is a hobby, but it's definitely something I love to do. Um, staying in shape is very important to me, um, mostly because it keeps my mind sharp. And whenever you have a day that seems to be or tempts you to feel like it's overwhelming or stressful, or you have an important decision to make, you need to have something to rely on to kind of calibrate your emotions. And for me, it's, it's working out, it's lifting weights, it's running, uh, any type of physical activity that involves me competing with myself to be better than I was the time that I attempted that same lift or same run uh, before. And so those, those are the things that I love to do. I love to work out, I love to lift weights, whether it's 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, two hours, whatever it may be, because you can really zone out, listen to some music, um, and tune out all the noise and really focus on becoming the best version of yourself. So I absolutely love um, anything dealing with uh, a physical uh, competition uh, inside my own mind. So lifting weights happens to be that thing. I am a huge, huge, huge HGTV watcher. I mean, I absolutely love interior design, fixer upper, property brothers. As a matter of fact, I try and make sure my home is emulous of all those TV shows, fixer upper, love it or list it, whatever it may be. But the way that they transform uh, what was considered trash into someone else's triumph is just amazing to me. The emotions that people have when they walk into these homes just the colors and the decorations and how they you know put pillows and colors and couches and uh, just different things i absolutely love all of it um you know having to take care of uh, the household a lot when i was growing up my mom gave me the green light to be able to change around the living room and, and just rearrange things often to make it look a little bit nicer and fret give it a fresher look and so hgtv even more so than Sports Center is my favorite station to watch, and I love absolutely like everything about it. I love I love all of it, uh, from the inside to the outside to the landscaping, everything that they do on flipping houses. Not necessarily the business side of it, because we know a lot of people flip homes, but just the process of going from absolutely nothing and a shell and a, a mere frame and building it out, and the, to change people's lives and to see their joy. Uh, after they get their new home is absolutely amazing to me. Well, my childhood best friends are still my best friends to this day. And I don't think you really can define somebody as your best friend until you go through some things with those friends. And usually that happens uh, majority of the time in high school and in those high school days. And so my, my best friends still to this day um, Jamal, Fred, Rob, Clay, uh, and Marcus. And those guys are guys I grew up with uh, from the fifth grade on. And we've been together, you know, through thick and thin and, and, and a lot of uh, challenges, um, a lot of moments where we were all looked at as champions. And uh, those guys are people that I can depend on. I think the definition of a best friend um, is someone that loves you unconditionally and is constant in that love. And so all of those guys combined uh, make me a better man. Uh, they made me a better young man. Um, but having, having those gentlemen in my life have definitely um, allowed me to, to ascend to a different level, um, a higher level. And they've added value to my life every single day. I'd either say either music or graphic design. I absolutely love music, all types of music, all types of genres. I have an ear for music. My mom says I have an old soul. So I love old school R&B, but I love some rock and roll. I obviously love hip hop, love reggae. Um, I, I mean, I absolutely love music. I mean, whatever, whatever jazz, 
whatever you put it on classical whatever you put it on i i can listen to it and i can pull out a hit too i can pull out a, a good song i could be hired today by one of these big time record companies to pick out the hits i could be that guy because i know a good sound song when i hear it on the flip side i love graphic design um, i like designing i like watching other people bring other people's visions to life graphically so whether it be photoshop or whatever it is that you use to bring uh, bring things to life and so i love graphic design I know that's a, a form of artistry, but then also music for sure. Uh, definitely love mo movies and things like that, but music and graphic design are, are the two forms of artistry that I appreciate the most. See, the problem with this question is it doesn't necessarily take into account all the combinations of ice cream that people have created. For example, Cold Stone Creamery, you can go uh, Oreo Overload. I mean, it's oreos it's 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 uh chocolate chips uh chocolate fudge with their you know sweet cream what is sweet cream they got sweet cream uh ice cream with whipped cream on it i you know that's a lot of different flavors but that's a good combination that i like to go to at least at cold stone if i had to choose between strawberry vanilla and chocolate then i'm going with chocolate and then probably vanilla and then strawberry last. I also like chocolate chip cookie dough. I also like mint chocolate chip. I also like chocolate chip. I also like chocolate chunks. I like chocolate chip chunk cookie dough as well. Listen, it's just too many combinations. Whatever, if it's hot outside, just give me one of those seven that I just listed and, and, and I'll be good to go. The one that I say the most is excuses are the crutches of the uncommitted. I just think it's powerful, especially when I'm, I'm speaking and I say it loud and boldly and angrily and aggressively. Uh, but excuses are the crutches of the uncommitted because it gives you both a great quote, um, it hits directly on something that holds people back consistently, which are excuses. And then you think from a visual standpoint, crutches are the uncommitted. So you think of a person on crutches, it's holding them up and it's holding them back simultaneously. And they obviously can't get to where they need to get to as fast as they want to. And they're hindered by some type of injury or some type of ailment. And so they're probably recovering as well. And so when you say excuses are the crutches of the uncommitted, now all of a sudden you got somebody that's uncommitted. Uh, who is limited by those excuses, somebody who doesn't really want it and they're not willing to do what it takes to, to get the job done. And so that's one that I often say that sticks out to me. But there are many uh, quotes that you can use. You can use any scripture from the Bible and it'll be a perfect, perfect quote to use. But that would be probably the most practical one uh, that I say most often. I don't necessarily wake up every day with uh, a phrase or a quote or some feel good um, idiom or something that, you know, anybody could use. Um, it's not so much a quote, uh, but just the mindset to stay driven and uh, to be able to keep moving forward when you feel like you want to quit, to be able to continue to move forward when the forces on the other side are doing their best to um, push you into submission, uh, to keep going even when the odds are against you, uh, to keep going when people and their opinions and their voices are against you, to be able to push through at your lowest and toughest of times, just the ability to keep going, to stay driven towards whatever that dream or that goal is at that particular moment in your life is what I live by because there is going to constantly be people and things and even experiences and environments that try and suppress and to, to shut off that valve of uh, light that you are. And so as long as you can continue to move forward, as long as you can figure out a way, even if it starts with a thought to keep going and to not give up or to do an about face because of something that you see, 
then you can get you can get to whatever you're going after to so to stay driven um, whatever that means in its capacity sometimes it's perseverance sometimes it's resilience sometimes it's just assisting other in assistance or whatever it may be to keep you moving forward towards your goals and your dreams um, is what what I tend to live by I would immediately have a conversation with my 15 year old self about pursuing your passions. As I mentioned, I love HGTV, I love graphic design, I love interior design, but those weren't things that I fully embraced because it wasn't necessarily the cool thing to do. I was a standout athlete and a standout student, but one of the things that I didn't necessarily spend a lot of my time on was my artwork. And so I knew I could draw, I knew I could paint, I knew I could design things, I knew I had ideas. But since it didn't really align with my dream, which was to make it to the NFL and to play for Ohio State, that was something that went on the back burner. And therefore, when I got to The Ohio State University, my major was in things that necessarily didn't revolve around that, but more so in things that I thought I should be doing because it sounded like a good major. And so I ultimately became a marketing major, which the spinoffs can be graphic design or different things like that. But I would focus um, and talk to myself about just pursue your passions. If you love art, go after it hard. If you love design, do something in that field um, and don't be afraid to do those things just because it doesn't align with your talent, uh, which just happen to be having athletic ability. 2020 has been a challenge for a lot of people, and I'm so blessed and so thankful to be able to have great people in my life. Uh, my mom um, has been my my backbone. She's been my anchor and uh, she's been my guiding light since I can remember. And just having that relationship uh, with her as one of my best friends now um, is just amazing. And I don't take it for granted every single day that I have on this earth and breathing and can call her and talk to her. Um, she's 58 now and still young and, and vibrant and beautiful as ever. Uh, but I don't take that for granted. As we watch uh, thousands and thousands of people pass away due to COVID-19 and obviously many other ailments. I mean, 57 million people pass away annually around the world. And each and every day that I get to wake up, um, I am so grateful and so thankful. And every day that she gets to wake up, I'm so grateful and so thankful. And obviously not just my mom, but my sister as well. And so growing up with a small family, um, just those two are my immediate um, uh, backbones and, and strengths and, and, and people that I want to make proud every single day. And then obviously my extended family and friends. I'm so thankful for everyone. I mean, life is so valuable. It's so delicate. And in a moment, in an instance, in the blink of an eye, um, you may not be here. And so just constantly reminding myself of that, not necessarily falling into some type of twilight and or uh, downward spiral and thinking of the negative things that can happen, but actually using the flip side of that as momentum to keep going as to why we're still on this earth, we can make a difference. We can make an impact. And so I absolutely love the fact that I'm blessed, I'm blessed and been, been able to be in position to make an impact for really uh, all my life. And so um, our Driven Foundation uh, with co-founder Antonio Smith, another former Buckeye, um, that's my brother in arms and that's my, 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 my guy that I could depend on. I mean, you can't really depend on everyone, but he's another gentleman uh, that I know has increased my life tremendously. Um, someone that understands my mindset uh, and kind of runs parallel with me uh, in our pursuit of greatness and excellence, not so much for ourselves and recognizing that life is not about us, uh, but that we, we have been called to do something great um, on this earth. And so um, those are moments that, that I'm so, so thankful for in people uh, playing for the Ohio State University, uh, playing in the NFL for four years and making that dream come true. Uh, but most importantly, the thing that I'm most proud of is being able to, from scratch, uh, start a nonprofit organization with Antonio. And uh, nobody kind of gave us a blueprint. We didn't know what we were doing. We're still trying to figure it out. We're still growing. We're still learning. Um, we're trying to do as best as we can in serving our community. And, you know, a lot of people don't know. I mean, it's four of us. It's four of us on staff that 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 do some amazing things um, for the Driven Foundation. And uh, that's it. I mean, everything is done in house. And so all the work and all the thousands of lives that we've been able to impact 
Um, in the last 12 years, over a million pounds of free food distributed to families all throughout Central Ohio, uh, boys leadership programs, girls programs, back to school events, uh, you name it, we've done it. Um, and we're so thankful to be able to do it. And now just moving forward into the next phase of my life here, here I am in my late thirties, or oh, not that late, but uh, mid to late thirties, uh, get an opportunity to speak all around the country and influence and impact professionals, help them to develop mental toughness. And so one thing that we all need right now as individuals is mental toughness, the ability to be able to perform under pressure. And all of us are under pressure right now. And I've been given the gift to be able to vocalize motivation, to be able to vocalize inspiration, uh, and to be able to strategize and come up with plans that be able to help people. And so those are things that I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for. These are all gifts that have been literally handed to me uh, from the heavens to be able to utilize. And I'm so thankful that I've been chosen to be able to use these gifts and talents to influence and impact the world around me. Uh, it makes it makes me uh, stay driven. It makes me stay motivated to be able to help others. I love the fact that if I don't do my job, other people won't be able to do theirs uh, or at least not as efficiently and effectively if they wouldn't have uh, would have if they hadn't hurt me. So. Again, the opportunity to be able to serve, to be able to work with people that I love and to be able to make a difference in this world um, is definitely a dream come true, even more so than playing in the NFL.